Welcome to my channel, my name is Kinga and my goal for this year, for 2024, is to keep discussing concepts and teachings to help us live a happier and more fulfilling life. I'm a meditation creator and teacher on Insight Timer, link to my profile below, where I also leave my Etsy store link so you can go and purchase my meditations that are not published on Insight Timer on YouTube. While I was doing the happiness course online from Harvard University earlier this year, I brought you all the wisdom and insights I learned and created videos on the topic. I hope you remember. And right now I am studying to become a spinal flow practitioner. I'm hoping to get certified by the end of May. And if you are in Stockholm and want to try it, send me a message. And this healing modality has taken me deeper into understanding emotions and how they affect our health. With the spinal flow technique, I have learned to release blockages from people's spine and nervous system. Blockages that have been stored for years, decades even. Blockages caused by emotional, chemical and physical stress and trauma. I think it's important that we talk about emotions and how they affect our health. I'm also bringing you some tools at the end of this video to help you not store them in your body. Emotions are energy in motion, constantly moving and flowing within us. Just like physical energy, such as electricity or heat, emotions can be transformed, redirected or stored within the body. Emotions are not just psychological experiences, but also this dynamic energy that flows through the body and influences our thoughts, behaviors and overall well-being. Emotions are meant to flow freely, much like water in a river. When we allow emotions to flow naturally, they can serve as valuable sources of information, guiding us in our interactions and decision-making. However, when emotions are suppressed, denied or repressed, they can create blockages in the energetic system, leading to imbalances, tension, pain, discomfort, disease, illness. When emotions are acknowledged and expressed freely in a healthy way, the body can maintain a state of balance and vitality. It's empowering to look at emotions as dynamic energy instead of fixed states where you are just this passive receiver or sufferer of them. I encourage you to recognize emotions as transient experiences that hold the potential for growth, transformation and self-awareness. When you keep emotions like stress, anger or sadness sort of locked inside, your body reacts. Chronic stress, for example, triggers a flood of hormones that over time can lead to issues like high blood pressure or heart disease and stomach problems. It's like a pressure cooker. If you never release the steam, eventually it explodes. And not only that, but burying emotions can weaken your immune system, making you more prone to getting sick. Your body's defense system takes a hit when it's constantly dealing with emotional stress, leaving you vulnerable to colds, infections, and even chronic illnesses. But it's not just your physical health that suffers, because ignoring your feelings can also mess with your head, leading to anxiety, depression, and other mental health issues. Plus, keeping everything bottled up can strain your relationships, making it harder to connect with others and leaving you feeling isolated and alone. So what can you do about it? Start by acknowledging your feelings instead of pushing them away. Talking to someone you can trust helps also, like, you know, whether it's a friend or family member or therapist. Finding healthy ways to express yourself, like through art, music, dancing or journaling, can also make a huge difference. In Access Consciousness teachings, one powerful approach to dealing with repressed emotions is to embrace a philosophy of radical self-awareness and non-judgment. Instead of suppressing or avoiding your emotions, try acknowledging them without judgment. Allow yourself to experience them fully, recognizing that they are not good or bad, 
They just are. By acknowledging and accepting your emotions for whatever they are, you can begin to release their holds on you and create a space for healing and growth. Now, I have spoken about the power of open-ended questions in many of my previous videos on this channel and how you can use them to expand your awareness and invite more possibilities to your life. I especially enjoy using these open-ended questions in manifesting or attracting things, people and events. Basically, uh, these open-ended questions are like the keys to unlock deeper insights and profound self-discovery. You just formulate and ask the questions out loud or in your mind, but you do not force yourself to fabricate an answer with your logical mind. The answer will come. When it comes to emotions, you could ask open-ended questions like, um, what emotions am I currently experiencing that I may have been avoiding or suppressing? How are these emotions showing up in my body and what messages might they be delivering for me to convey? What would it look like to fully embrace and accept these emotions without judgment? How can I cultivate a greater sense of self-awareness and presence to navigate my emotions with more ease and grace? And my favorite and most simple question, you probably need to write it down, is who does it belong to? It's a fundamental question in access consciousness that prompts individuals to consider whether the emotions or thoughts they are experiencing are truly their own or if they are picking up on the feelings of others around them. Now, this question is based on the premise that many of the emotions we experience, 90 something percent of them, are not actually ours, but rather belong to people we interact with or the collective consciousness at large. Now, in the context of repressed emotions, asking who does it belong to can be a powerful tool for gaining clarity and perspective. When you find yourself overwhelmed by strong emotions, it could be anything, take a moment to pause and ask yourself this question. By doing so, you create a space to disentangle yourself from the emotional baggage you may have unknowingly taken on from others. Now, here's how to use it. So when you notice yourself experiencing a particularly intense negative emotion, pause for a moment and acknowledge it. Name the emotion you are feeling, whether it's anger, sadness, fear or something else. And once you have identified the emotion, ask yourself, who does it belong to? This will immediately shift your focus from simply experiencing the emotion to questioning its origin. Is this feeling truly yours or are you picking up on someone else's energy or emotion? After asking who does this belong to, pay attention to how the question makes you feel. If there's a sense of lightness or relief, it's likely that the thought or feeling or emotion wasn't yours. If there's no change or you feel heavier, it might be something that's truly yours to address. Sometimes a simple act of asking the question can create an immediate shift in your perception or feeling. I have actually tried it many, many times with frustration, sadness, or even physical sensations like headaches. And they all dissipated almost instantly after asking the question. You might also notice a sudden clarity or dissipation of the emotion or thought yourself, indicating that it wasn't yours. So if you feel that it's not yours, you could say it out loud, I am sending it back to wherever or whoever it came from with love and consciousness attached. By using the who does this belong to question as a tool for exploring repressed emotions, you can gain a deeper understanding of your own emotional landscape and reclaim a sense of clarity and sovereignty over your inner word. By not releasing emotions that do not belong to you, you actually risk carrying unnecessary burdens and distortions within your emotional landscape. And this sort of accumulation of uh, emotions and blockages can cloud your perception, leading to confusion, stress, disconnection from your authentic self. But the most important benefit of releasing strong negative emotions, regardless if they belong to you or not, is not adding these layers and layers uh, on top of each other, layers of physical tension or blockages in the spine and the nervous system, which if left untreated, will eventually interfere with the body's innate ability to heal and function optimally. And this is what I've been studying and I have learned this amazing technique that helps your body release these blockages without having to 
relive those traumatic events or have to talk about your feelings and whatever you went through. And again, if you are in Stockholm, send me a message. Come and see me for a free spinal flow session. I would love to see you. And if you found this video insightful, please give it a like, share it with someone who might benefit from it, and don't forget to subscribe. And before you leave, I want to share my dream with you and invite you to join me from the start. I'm actually planning to create an app where you can access all my guided meditations and online courses in one single organized, beautiful library very convenient. You could say goodbye to the individual purchases from my webshop with a simple single flat fee and it would give you unlimited access to the entire collection, always updated and expanded. Join the waitlist by clicking the link below for exclusive updates on the app's progress, early access and a special lifetime access offer. Let's build this future together as a community. Thank you for your support. Click the link below and get involved. Now like, share and subscribe for more. I hope to see you around. Take care. Thank you.